I would like to start off by apologizing to my subscribers for the pretty cancerous and obvious lag in my previous videos. I was using OBS Studio and now I'm going to try using GeForce Shadowplay and see if I get better results. Anyway, here's the video. Howdy gamers, it's Gaming Rambles and today I've got another tips, tricks, and cheese video concerning the Tomb Kings in the late game. I know these videos don't perform nearly as well as my meme videos because frankly they're just not as funny. As long as I can help out one person's campaign, I'll consider this video a success. And don't worry, I'm definitely going back to meme videos after this. I'm covering a lot of different topics in this video, so it'll be a long time before I make another video like this. So if you watched my meme video on Ark in the Black, I recently completed a campaign with him on Legendary Difficulty. And even though Arkin has one of the hardest starting positions in the game, the late game was way harder for me. Part of the reason the late game was so hard for me is because I was an idiot and I didn't manage diplomacy well. I signed a non-aggression pact with Clan Eshin because I didn't want to go to war with them. And the dwarves didn't like that at all and they declared war on me pretty fast. But one of the things that made it so hard is that by the time you consolidate all that juicy desert territory that you really want at the beginning of the game, either as Cetra or Ark on the Black, you're going to want to start pushing northeast. But this area in the northeast, this Badlands, is absolutely insane, especially after the Greenskin update. It is just a free-for-all between the Greenskins, the Dwarves, and the Skaven, and by the time you get there, it's probably going to be close to turn 80 to 100, and one of those three will have dominated the region. And once they start snowballing, it gets insane. So in the late game, you're probably going to have to encounter one of those three factions for a significant period of time. Thankfully, none of these factions have great cavalry, so there's one army composition that will work super well against these factions, and that's Tomb Scorpions. On paper, Tomb Scorpions are some of the weakest single entity units in the game, and there are even better single entity units within the Tomb King's own roster. But there's a ton of factors in a campaign that contribute to making these units incredibly effective. First up, we have AI cheats. Now, on the higher difficulties, the AI get a ton of cheats. Their units get more melee attack, more leadership, and they have significantly less army upkeep so they can field more armies than you. But the most important cheat for the purpose of this video is growth. The AI can grow their cities ridiculously fast on the higher difficulties. Unless you're playing as maybe a Lariel, I don't think you can outgrow your cities. So one of the worst things you can do on the higher difficulties is conquer a ton of territory in the early game and then try to grow it faster than the AI. This is especially true as the Tomb Kings because growing a city is incredibly expensive for them. A better strategy is to wait until the AI build up their own settlements and then conquer those settlements. Unfortunately, whenever you conquer an AI settlement, the tier of the city goes down. Just to show y'all what that looks like, here I'm about to attack a tier 5 settlement. After the battle, if I sack it, it'll go down a tier automatically. So it goes from a tier 5 to a tier 4. And then if I occupy it, it goes down another tier. So if all I do is occupy the settlement, it'll go down to a tier 4, even though it started as a tier 5. This is the reason why the tier that you can develop a unit is so important. It's significantly easier to get a tier 4 settlement than it is to get a tier 5 settlement. Another reason the Tomb Scorpion is so valuable in campaigns is because it only takes two turns to recruit. Two turns on very hard or legendary difficulty is already long enough, but three turns is absurd. If you're at war with the Greenskins, the Dawi, or the Skaven, they can have four full stacks and they can bring them all the way from Narnia by the time three turns are over. Once you start taking their territory, you cannot afford to lose your momentum. My next point is healing. There are only a few factions that can effectively heal in this game, and the Tomb Kings are definitely one of them. The resurrectability at the end of the red line is probably the best healing mechanic in the entire game, and this should definitely be the first thing you try to pursue on their skill tree. Having a faction that can reliably heal significantly increases the power of a single entity army, because each of those units has 75% more health than they can get in healing throughout the course of the battle. So even though the game says my Tomb Scorpions only have 4500 health, they can restore 3300 health throughout the course of the battle. My last point includes tactics you can use with Tomb Scorpions. Tomb Scorpions are all siege attackers, so you don't have to wait a turn to attack a settlement with walls. And Tomb Scorpions can all hide, which is surprisingly useful, so you can hide them in the forest while your legendary lord or a hero go out and waste all the enemy's ammunition, and then you just pull them into the fray later. 
Once you finally use Tomb Scorpions in the battle, you're going to want to attack isolated units first, and then make sure all of your Tomb Scorpions are clumped together. This will maximize the effect of your Lord's Resurrect ability and any buffs you might apply, such as Arkham the Black's Liver Mortis. Some useful items that will benefit this Doom stack include Glittering Scales, to give your enemies a minus 5 melee attack, the Helm of Discord, to reduce your enemy's melee attack and melee defense, the other trickster shard to reduce your enemy's magic resistance, this is extra useful against the dwarves, as well as the icon of rulership to increase leadership and melee defense. Attaching heroes with the treacherous trait will also help. I would try to attach a lich priest with this trait and use him to cast vortex spells. In case you're wondering, I prefer the lore of death to the others, unless you're trying out a bone giant spam, in which case the lore of light is preferable. Necrotex also apply buffs to your tomb scorpions, but they're usually pretty squishy, so I try to keep them out of the fight. Finally, I want to show you what a normal battle would look like with this army composition. So in this battle, I've caught a stack, a full stack of dwarves in Force March, and I have Ark in the Black and 8 Tomb Scorpions. Now, it'd definitely be preferable if I had a full stack, but you can only recruit so many units based on your building types, and most of my Tomb Scorpions are elsewhere, and it takes two turns to recruit these Tomb Scorpions, so usually I just I don't have time or the resources to get a full stack of Tomb Scorpions. But thankfully, this is all I need. I have more than enough units to easily win this battle. Now first, we're going to want to hide all of our units that can hide. The only unit that can't is the Necrotect, because he's on a chariot, which is kind of funny. We can hide our artillery piece, but we can't hide the Necrotect. We're definitely going to want to hide our artillery piece. That's really only for attacking settlements, so I can blow up the towers. That's the only reason I have the uh, Casket of Souls in this army. So a mage and the Casket of Souls, they're going to go in the back, because we don't want them to fight in this battle at all. And then Hark in the Black is just going to come up here and waste the enemy's ammo. The flame cannons and the organ guns are the most dangerous units in this army. We don't want to bring our Tomb Scorpions out while those things have ammo because they will just rip our Tomb Scorpions apart. But once these things are gone, the rest of the army is kind of easy pickings. And if we can waste the gyrocopters ammo, then that's even more useful. Now, the gyrocopters, they're kind of like gunshots, so it's kind of hard to dodge those, but Ark in the Black, I really cheesed his missile defense. This guy's got like 85% missile resistance right now, so it's I definitely want the gyro bombers to attack me instead of uh, the Tomb Scorpions. So ideally, you'd want to wait until the enemy artillery are out of ammo before you engage your Tomb Scorpions, but I, uh, I wasn't microing the Tomb Scorpions as well as I should have. I, I should have put them farther in the forest. They got discovered. Um, thankfully, the artillery are almost out of ammo. So I'm just going to bring in Arkin, and we're going to get started getting another chapter in the Book of Grudges. So Arkin's going over there so he can get in a clump and he can use his Resurrect ability. I just applied the Liver Mortis to them to get that physical resistance. Now we really want to take out these Iron Drakes and the Flamethrowers. While this is all going on, I'm going to use Ark in the Black to use a couple Vortex spells. After a couple good Vortex spells and a lot of Resurrect ability, the uh, army loss penalty is inflicted and the Dwarves are gone. Now the Dwarves are in Force March so I don't have to chase any of these guys down and honestly it probably wouldn't matter. I would probably only try and chase down their artillery just because it's annoying wasting the enemy's ammo for every battle. It just takes a long time. And now I'm going to clump all my Tomb Scorpions together, and Arkin is just going to use his regeneration ability as often as possible. And my Lich Priest, I'm bringing him out of hiding now so he can corral these other people and uh, keep them on the map longer so I can get as many heals as possible. One of my Tomb Scorpions got pretty dinged up, and so I won't be able to heal him to his max health. But what normally happens is the enemy's not in Force March, so you have to fight them again. And I would definitely recommend manually fighting them again and just healing your units all the way and getting an easy victory. So now I'm going to use the Lich Priest to just trap these dwarves here with the Net of Naaman Talk while Ark in the Black gets as many heals as he can. And once you've healed the Tomb Scorpions up to their maximum health, or, you know, up to their limit cap for regeneration, then you end the battle, and would you look at that, another heroic victory. Too easy. Too easy. I have an absurd number of heroic victories on this campaign because of Ark and the Black's army and this unit composition. It's absurdly good, and you get a great bang for your buck. So hopefully I've sold you guys on the magical wonders of the Scorpion Doomstack because you can start recruiting these guys as soon as you occupy a new province. They only take two turns to recruit, 
They're easy to heal, and they're incredibly useful in battles. Alright guys, no one else is allowed to subscribe. This is normally the part of the video where other YouTubers ask you to subscribe, but not me. I have my reasons. Oh, would you look at that, the page is refreshing. <laughs>